I'm willing to put money on it that thing's not recording. It is recording. I pressed record. Right, now let's put the pillow in front. Okay. Let's go. Stop man messing around. How's my hair looking? A bit mushroomy. It's mushroomy? Like, yeah, like in the sense that it spreads out. Yeah. The, the, the shower here, there's a lot of salt in the water, a lot of chlorine. It makes my hair go like that. It's nothing to do with any train derailments recently. No, no, no. Okay. No. How, how are you anyway, Callum? <laughs> um, I'm great. Well, I'm, I'm super excited to be officially hosting or co-hosting a podcast with, with you. Mr. Wow. Mr. Mark Extraordinary Trump. stuff here, folks. Callum Eilert has officially agreed to be on a podcast with me. I know, because you said it was going to be a bit more serious than the other ones. Yeah. So, um, as we all know, Clem's Wine Corner, a massive hit globally, worldwide, one of the biggest podcasts in the world where we just drink wine and chat, really. And this one is supposed to be a bit more serious. Isn't it, Callum? Yeah, it was meant to be, you know, family friendly without the swearing, but clearly we ruined. Yeah, we can beat that out. But um, how's your how's your last couple of days been, mate? (sighs) Well, it's been great. I mean, since we met, what was it, last Saturday to to discuss this, um, I did tweak my neck yesterday in my sleep, so I I can't really turn right. But no, other than that, luckily for the ovals, we go left, but we haven't got any ovals soon. Um, You definitely haven't got any ovals soon. (laughs) No, well, my last couple of days. Haven't been uh, any better, mate. I um, discovered American food, I heard. I suffered from a serious case of uh, food poisoning, which uh, I believe is just American food. Um, From what I've heard, everyone's just been saying, mate, you just need to harden up. Just get on with it. Unfortunately, uh, my immune system's not quite used to it, so I've actually, like, no word of a lie, been in my bed for the past 24 hours trying to recover from quinoa, of all things. You think that was it? Yeah. <laughs> it's bizarre, isn't it? Well, so, yeah. Even the healthy food completely messes me up. I don't know why. It must be the sauces. It could be the sauce. Uh, Americans do love sauce. Spicy stuff as well. Sugar. Fuck, they put sugar on everything. It's the, the high fructose corn syrup and stuff like that. Yeah, it's disastrous. I mean, you just go down the road, you go to Starbucks and you look at those coffees. It's like those things, just looking at them give you fucking... Lots of issues, <laughs> but people love them. Um, anyway, there's nothing against Starbucks. I do yeah. like Starbucks. Anyway, we're meant to be talking about racing in this podcast. Well, hang on. Let's 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 discuss where we got to. So okay. we haven't fully decided on a name, but I was given a name about ten minutes ago from Marcus's brother, um, and it's a hit with me. It might be a hit with you guys. If it is this name, well, you'll see it on the the title. Yeah. The name is on the side pod. It's quite good, I think. I, th- I think that's very good. Apparently, it's good because, uh, as my brother described it, there are three uh, there are three sides to it. Uh, obviously, we are professional racing drivers. So, and what do racing cars have on them? Side pods. Side pods. So uh, that makes sense. Number two was it's a side job. Technically, side hustle. You a know. side it's hustle. Not a job yet, but may- might be. Might yeah. be. Yeah. Could be. Um, you never know. And the third one being, it's a podcast. So, yeah, there's a pod at the end of it. So, sensational. Wow. Absolutely wonderful. Otherwise, we were going to call it Screaming Something, but uh, we couldn't quite get that one to work. I actually wrote down a couple of names, uh, if any of you guys have uh, anything to say. Behind the Scenes, uh, Callum and Marcus, Isla and Armstrong, Hush Hush Backstage, Off the Record, and Screaming. And all of them are terrible, so we've decided on on the side pod. For now, anyway. We are open to suggestions, um, but I, probably once this is out, that is the one, I okay. guess. But yes. yeah. So, well, for those of you who do know, we don't... Okay, something's falling down. For those of you who do know, um, this is Marcus, uh, and obviously you know him, and I'm Callum. Hi, for Callum. those of you... Who, oh, hello. Okay. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, we've got... Multiple F2 wins between us. He was vice champion in F3. I was vice champion in F2. Uh, we are now racing together in IndyCar, different teams. Um, but yeah, we're here to How give many you a races did you win in F2? Three. Three. How many Feature races, though, right? Uh, yes, maybe two and one. My memory of you in F2 was that you should have won a lot more than you did. I think that's a, a life memory. That, yeah, to be fair, that could summarize your career at this point. Yeah. It all went downhill. I remember when you'd, you'd always be like P1 or something in F2 and you'd like, I don't know, you'd, you'd either crash into a back marker or you'd stall in a pit stop or... <laughs> 
have an eye lot moment as we describe it in the racing world. I remember back in F3, he used to crash <laughs> quite a lot. But the thing is, he'd also qualify on pole a lot. So it was like, you know, there's an extremely fast bloke, but there's also a guy who crashes a lot. So There's one word that I heard a lot, and it still haunts me to this day, is potential. I'm described as a man with so much potential. Yeah. And I've grown to hate that word. It It haunts me to this day. In, a, in an Italian accent as well, or what is it? Potential. When we are in a Ferrari, you have a lot of potential. Huh? Well, it was it was everywhere with the with the French with ART. Yes. Um, but the good thing is now in IndyCar you don't need to save tires. So. Well, that, yeah, that's one issue. You. Yeah, one thing, and then you know you're flat out all the times and the pit stops and stuff. So it's quite hard to stall. <laughs> no standing starts. Quite hard to stall. Um, yeah, my life is easier. Yeah. Well, uh, I think we're, we're meant to be discussing the Formula 2 season, aren't we? Well, that, yeah, that is episode one. That is um, episode one. Where did we get to with that? We chose that because we obviously, I just finished F2 last year. Callum is, a, um, is fairly knowledgeable as well, and we're both very passionate about it. I've got the results here on my laptop, oh, you've got it here. my iPad, because I'm very, very organized. But um, So I guess we're going to discuss a little bit about the test uh, they had, which was... This is, I've screenshotted Yaz Island here. Yeah, that's Bahrain. a long time ago. Luckily, I got Bahrain here because I'm prepared. Right. <laughs> um, so, on day one, um, interestingly, Porsche was P1, right? And you Whoop kind of expect do. that. You would expect that, I Why? Guess. Oh, because he's done a season and it jumps straight in and is, is strong. I think he's done a couple of seasons now. Uh, Let's have a guess. When did he start? Uh, I think he had his first season on my second year. So he, he replaced me in ART, if you remember well. Um, but I suppose... Well, anyway, he's done one year, no? No, two. Okay, two. Yeah, two years. So, okay, he's P1 on the first day. Interestingly, Leclerc is P3 on the That first is very day. interesting. Um, ahead of Iwaza as well. I mean, to be fair... I have the feeling that an F2 car will sort of suit Arthur um, just because he loves to push entries. Oh, yeah, that's true. If you can straight line the braking yes. well, you're good. He's like, he's allergic to combined. From what I saw anywhere, I don't know for certain, but whenever <laughs> I saw... Allergic to combined. <laughs> okay, that works with F2. He's like, he, he loves to brake late. And uh, if there's one guy who's super late on the brakes, it's going to be Arthur. So I understand that an F2 car is probably going to suit him. Which is like a bit the opposite to me. I like to, I like to push entries, but I like to be very, very, I suppose early on break point, but just really aggressive to the apex, which is the opposite just of Arthur. overall outstanding driver, yeah? Thanks, man. You're welcome. Uh, we've got Enzo Fittipaldi bringing up P6. Okay. And uh, I mean... You know what? In, in all seriousness, though, I have to say jumping between two different cars. So when 2019... Uh, I finished in Abu Dhabi um, the race with Chiruz and then three days later testing with Virtuosi. And you know what? Frustratingly, because everything is so similar, the little differences are the most painful. It took me like two days to kind of get used to the fact that one car did some things very well and not the others and yeah. the other doing the other yeah. things very well. That I spent two days of just pure mistakes and couldn't put a lap together. Well, the worst thing would be if you jump from one team to the next and the car felt exactly the same. You'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah, that would be, uh, in a certain way, quite disappointing. But at the same time, you would hope that everything felt the same because you might feel like you're doing something wrong. I mean, day one of a preseason test is probably the most irrelevant piece of information we could ever give you. Um, I reckon we should go to day three. because yeah, that's cool. oh, Actually, no, day three is pointless because they're doing race runs. I'm pretty sure. Because you only have a certain amount of tyres in F2. You mm. see, for those watching, uh, in our other podcast... Yes, you are correct. It's literally a rule not to mention tyres. In fact, every time we mention tyre deg, we have to do a shot of tequila. Where's the shot? You've done it. Um, you mentioned it. It's but gone. It's done. on it's this gone. podcast, we actually do speak about tyres. Oh, do we? Whoa! Since when did that rule get invented? Since we decided to discuss motorsport. Uh, day two is probably the most relevant for lap time. I think, but day one and day two... The rat and lap time is relatively similar, like 42.1. Yeah. 42.1. Yeah, Richard Vashore seems to be quite quick, which I actually, 
I think he's a bit of a wagon driver, to be fair. Well, remember Mikhail 2019? He won, didn't he? He did with MP. Yikes. Okay, so Richard's going to be fastest year. He also won the first race of the season last year in Bahrain, um, if I remember well. And um, he's also changed to Van Amersfoort. Yes. Which... Dutch, Dutch, makes sense. No? It does, but they don't really have any serious past successes in Formula 2, do they? Hang on. Let's go from where they came from because it was originally Arden and okay. then became BWT Arden and then it was what HWA yeah and then HWA became Van Amersfoort right is yeah. that am I correct in that yes and so none of them really had any race wins no well Antoine did yes um and he he kind of was holding up that team he was obviously, yeah. for yeah. for a while yeah. um but uh I, I don't know I mean it, it you you know, you can see with MP, all it takes is a little refresh, get oh. some new guys in. To be fair, though, MP is just Prema 2.0 now. Yes. I, I mean, I wasn't going to mention that at first. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, they, they did, uh, for those of you who don't know, they did hire a few people from... A few? Most. Everyone. Yeah, but some people did different journeys to get there. True. Um, I, I think it's awesome. Whenever I walk past the MP truck, they're always having the most fun in the paddock because... They're always... It's it's very... So, Paolo, right? Paolo, yes. Was he your engineer in F3? He was. He was. Okay, so Paolo was Drugovic's engineer... In F2. In F2. Last year. Both years, right? I think he's engineering Hauger this year. So, Dennis is actually P3 on day two. So, I... Honestly, I would be... I would be very surprised not to see both of those boys, Jahan and Dennis, inside the top five in quali in Bahrain. Just because they've got a very good car, they have a good car. They're both very good, um, and it's also like first race of the season, so it's like kind of you know you have momentum from the previous year, sort of helps you out a bit. You know who a bit who's my dark horse a little bit, Ralph, because he had a lot of issues last year, right? I mean, I love Ralph, but he's only going to be on pole in Monaco, Baku, and Saudi. Yeah, but as long as you're solid in all the other places. Right, and you just you're picking up the points. In the I don't rest. think I don't think the Campos car is is good enough on on these normal tracks. Like I think he's very good, and he just rags lap time out of it on a street track. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, technical. How's my camera going? I don't know, but probably better than mine. Anyway, what at least we have both. What um, happened to yours? He just decided that it was going to stop. Right. Um, Let's ignore that. What are we talking about? Ralph. Yeah. Ralph, yeah, Campos. But again, like I said, it can always change. You know, you can always get a refresh, different setup philosophy, and it can work. So I I, I think he's a little bit of a dark horse. And then we've got Doohan in well, P6. Going back to Ralph, okay, we'll I, I think that he's seriously good on a street track. Yes. Like, watching him, uh, I think it was... It would have been last year, actually. I was in the second... No, it would have been... Yeah. Maybe my dams here, I don't remember. But I was watching him in the first group in quali at Monaco. And in, in, in Monaco for F2, there's two groups of quali. So you have to watch the first group, basically. And I was watching Ralph through the swimming pool. And I was like, holy shit. Are they really? Like, he's seriously on it. Like, millimeters from crashing every single push lap. Just very confident. So I... I think that he's good on those sorts of tracks, but tracks that like where tire deg is actually a factor. Yeah, but then the only thing is, because of the experience, you outrace a lot of them. It makes a big difference. Mm. I think Jack Doohan, like you were just saying, he's going to be the man to beat in quali. Like I genuinely believe that he's he's going to smash everyone in quali this year. Yeah, they was, he was really strong already last year. Yeah, so. and fair play to him. He... He drives the wheels off that Virtuosi car. You obviously drove for Virtuosi, didn't you, mate? I did. I did. I was the hero for a year, I guess. <laughs> um, With Guan Yuzu. Yes. He was what a superstar lineup that would have been. Guan Yuzu what and... What would have been? It was, a, it was a superstar line. Are you talking about F1? Oh, both of you guys. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it could be a super... It's never too late, mate. You could be teammates with one, one at one point. I mean, it's up to him, isn't it, if he wants me back. Yeah, so Jack Doohan's going to be hard to beat. Um, he's obviously sandbagging a bit. I'll be quite honest. F2 testing is just a sandbagging competition, especially if you're driving a Prema car. 
Yeah, where are they in this one? <laughs> oh, just behind. The, they, you know, rumor has it they actually put a different fuel tank in for testing, so they can hold more fuel. Yeah, but you know, oh no, um, you know what uh, is funny about the F two sandbagging and F three sandbagging? Go on. Is when you add too much weight, it really becomes undrivable. I don't know if you've ever experienced this of testing the amount that you can add. Mm. There is a point of no return mm. where you go from like originally they do it to obviously slow you down, but it exaggerates the balance of the car. Yeah. That's the first thing. And so, you so every problem you have is just exaggerated. So you understand whether where it's you understeer, need to, oversteer, yeah. the braking or whatever. Yeah. So it's, it's quite good, but you get to a certain point where the thing just doesn't make sense. No. It, you come in and you're like, how about your race runs when you've got 110 kilos of fuel on board and you're about three seconds a lap off, like some guy who's doing, a 10 lap run it's, 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 a, bit it's, a, it's a bit of a mind uh what's the poli- politically correct way to say uh, in french uh, fuck. <laughs> um but the one thing i did do a couple of times uh was was testing items okay. right for the first half of a day in my second team in f2 we would be testing um should we say some some items and I'd have to stay on the same, like imagine for the first half of a test day, and you only got three of these in the year of 2020. I was spent driving around 150 kilometers on every straight. What, doing error tests? Well, yeah, and other things, but... Um, the virtuosity secrets. Well, yeah, but you need all these things, especially when we had the new tires. We needed the information yeah. for, for that sort of stuff. Far out. That was a tough day for me. When we first discovered those 18-inch tires had a heavier steering weight... <laughs> and you turn into <laughs> turn eleven. Fuck me. Yeah, but it wasn't. It wasn't until we got to Silverstone. Yeah. Oh, mate. So, uh, let's not even go. We'll we'll get there eventually. <laughs> One day we'll get there. But yeah, that that is the F two test. I mean, what what are your predictions really for the races? Uh, for the races, I mean, I'll start with quality because okay. quality is always fun. So you said Dylan right? already. I think the Dylan will be hard to beat. Berman, uh, what do you think? Because Bremer will always have a good car. True. Um, but I don't see Behrman being inside the top three or five in his first quali. Um, I think, as I said, the two MP boys, Jahan and Dennis, they'll be pretty quick. I think I think Jahan always pulls it out in Bahrain. Yes, but in the, in he the races, it. it's very, it's, it's, if you've got the knack for Bahrain, it's easy to do. Yeah, like, I'm the opposite. I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't actually, I remember we shared the front row, didn't we, in 2020? At the end, in which, which one? Because it was the two configurations, wasn't there? The first weekend. Okay, yeah. I'm pretty, the feature race or the sprint? The, the feature, we shared the front row. Did we? Yeah. Oh, I was pole, yeah. And then... I don't remember what happened, but... Drugo won, I finished P2, you dropped back. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, that's because it's a very, very, very daggy circuit, and I was not particularly good at that point in my life with dag. <laughs> but going back to quali, um, yeah, I think that Awaza will be fast, so... Yes, he was quick last year, especially halfway through to the end. In no particular order, I would say there will be Porsche... Hauger, Jahan, Duin, and... Let's not forget Mr. Fittipaldi. Oh, fuck me. Seriously? Yeah, I think he, I think he's going to be quick. That Carlin car is quick. Yeah, in the race, potentially, but he's not going to be on pole. I think once And whatever twice, happens, he'll be lucky think. with strategy, as he was last year. Actually, at one point last year, we were just like doing our strategy meeting, and we'd be like, whatever Enzo's doing, just put me on that strategy, because it'll work. It just always did for whatever reason last year like because he'd be starting outside the top 12 usually yes but then then because normally what the top six to eight will do the soft hard right and then if you were behind p6 Mm. you would go the alternate so hard soft Mm. but when you get to like p12 and stuff that's where it mixes up and you get like some stragglers that don't know what to do because everyone else in front is doing like the strange stuff so you you would just decide with whatever he was doing. Yeah, but it would somehow always work. Like there'd be like a safety car on the lap that would be ideal for his strategy. So you were just gambling off of luck. But it worked, man. And he also, whenever he was on my strategy, like in Budapest, for example, yeah. he like overcut us 
but for whatever reason at Budapest, like the the tire didn't cleft, you know, like it just like sort of it did in 2020, yeah. And since our outlaps were so slow, the overcut worked, so he ended up coming out leading. Oh. I guess it's not really luck at that point. I think that's probably just being smart. So fair play to him on that case. It could be, yeah. Okay. Enzo Fair will enough. be there in the race, as he always is, and that Carlin car is good at Bahrain. We all know that. So Yeah, it is actually. Very good. Yeah. Um, I think that's about it, really, on that side. I mean, I, I would agree. Um, do you want to put a, a wager on it? you want to put some money on a pole? On whose pole? Pole at Bahrain. Or top three? I'm... I'm Okay, we, we'll do... How about $5? No, 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 no. No. Why not? 50 $50? $50. You can afford it, mate. You're an IndyCar driver now. Are you sure you have $50? <laughs> we spend it all on this podcast. Really, yeah. You know? um, oh, 20 All right. Fine. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. 20. Go on. I mean, it's the first one. Top three. Top three and then one, like, wild card. Doohan, Porsche, Fittipaldi. I'm shocked. Uh, I, I I agree with Doohan. Um P2 will be... Jahan. P3... Um, P3 will be... Iwaza. And my wild card is Hedger. Oh, yeah? yeah. Oh, okay. Well, the old high-tech wagon. Well, but you'd be silly not to mention him, really. He's quick. He's young, isn't he? He's very young. To be fair, both the high-tech boys are very young. Are they and the youngest team on the grid? Probably. Yes, I think so. Well, Jack is... He's like 17, 16 you or something. You have to be 18 to race F2, I think. I yeah. don't even think... He's not 18. He's oh, not. Yeah? No. Well, maybe I don't know the rules anymore, but... No, Fair but enough. they're both fast. I can't imagine being in an F2 at the age of 17, though. Because you were barely out of diapers at that point, weren't you? Still not out of diapers. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think that's that's our that's our twenty minutes we were trying to aim for. Um, well, it's been lovely actually for yeah. a first episode. It's been um, it's been it's been real. I wonder I wonder how the technicalities work with everything because this is this is nature. Yeah, things. hopefully this actually works uh, because I doubt my microphone's even turned on. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Um, thanks, Rory, for setting this up. Yeah, thanks, thanks everyone, Rory. for listening.